Happy Friday! The market is performing well. If you have nothing better to do on a Friday night like I don't, um, stay with me. We're going to be talking about um, what's happening with Bitcoin at this moment and are the old coins going to pump? And there's some interesting technical analysis about Bitcoin that I wanted to talk about. And I'm gonna, I have some images and diagrams that I've selected throughout the day from all the research that I've been doing. I, for those of you who don't uh, know me, I'm a researcher. I work for the University of Oxford. Uh, predominantly, I work with uh, AI, but I also work with uh, blockchain security and post-quantum cryptography and various other things. So throughout the day, I've been collecting different charts and different diagrams that I believe they can signal something. Uh, we don't know if that analysis is correct or not, but uh, stay with me and I can show you my hypothesis and hopefully we're going to determine what's happening with the market currently. There's also lots of hype about um, about this company called MicroStrategy and uh, many people are buying that uh, Let's talk about that. Is it worth or is it not worth? I'm going to talk about it until uh, around the end. And um, then I'm going to tell you what's my opinion about Bitcoin. What zone are we? Is it worth buying Bitcoin now or is it not worth buying? Um, so that's going to come at the end. Let's start from the beginning. So one of the most interesting uh, images that I've seen today from many influencers it's uh <laughs> everybody's congratulating you about the bitcoin bitcoin price going up uh this channel is for dgens uh, airdrop hunters and people who are looking for 1000x or even 1000x is not something i'm looking it's like more like 100,000x um so bitcoin it's most of the people who are in crypto, they are not Bitcoin holders. People who are holding crypto Bitcoin at this present moment are ETH, uh, exchange traded fund holders, people who are just entering. So Bitcoin price hasn't really affected uh, that much on, on my portfolio, which is not that great. Um, so let's look at this. Let's start with this analysis. In the red, we have the long-term holders but those long-term holders are between six months and two years. And in orange and green, we have long-term holders, which are two years plus. And who is selling at this present moment? Uh, so if we, this is the key from the figure, we call this the net, the figure key. Uh, remember that. And if you look at uh, the chart over here, so hold on. This section over here tells you who is actually selling at this present moment. And it's the six months to two year holders. Those, most of the money outflow uh, the, that is coming out, it's from the, not the very long term holders. Uh, and is that a good news or a bad news? Well, for people who are holding old coins, it's a good news because there's outflow from uh, Bitcoin and that is inevitably going to lead to old coins. What else do we have on the market? So this profit, it's uh, the realized profit and loss is uh, around 2.6 billion per day that they're taking profit. And for many traders, that's all they want. Uh, they want to take the money and leave. And maybe that's the smartest way to play this game. Actually, those traders that they're entering the market now, they're not the same level as they were before Bitcoin had uh, these approvals. Um, so these traders, they're professionals and uh, they're taking the money and running. Uh, they're not going to wait for this to go up or to go down. Uh, basically, this is their exit point. Uh, so if it's going to go up to 150,000, like some people predict, it doesn't matter to them because they are taking 2.6 billion of profit per day. So th this is a very important figure to remember because what how is this going to influence bitcoin in the long term in the past we didn't have traders not as much um, we didn't have the professional traders and professional traders bring stability to the market when it goes up they sell when it goes down they buy they have their own uh, arbitrage options financial instruments that they put stop losses so they bring equilibrium in the market and this we can see this happening now and this is a image is courtesy of uh, check on chain what else do we have uh this image hold on 
just the reference. This is from Fidelity. So this is another interesting image. And let's see what does it mean, equities and liquidity. Well, you can see that this line over here, that's 2022, how the liquidity was kind of draining. And then we had this period over here when there was no liquidity. So just for the record, the purple here, that's liquidity. Uh, so this section here is liquidity, money coming into the market. And here we can see there was a, a very significant drop in liquidity. And that has started rebounds in 2023. So this was the initial phases of the bull market. And now we're in a full swing. How far can this go up? Well, if we draw a line over there, there's still a long way to go. But just... It's an interesting intersection here that the money is coming back in the market. So we can expect this to go up, not necessarily BTC. We can expect that this includes the stock market and everything. Uh, so why was this period over here more of a downward trend? Well, tidying up of uh, credits, uh, interest rate rises, various different reasons why liquidity is tightening up and when there's no money basically prices are going down but now we can see in this figure over here in the purple that liquidity is coming back on the market what else what are other interesting figures i've seen throughout the day ah this is a good one uh, because most people they don't know if it's a good time to invest or not to invest well as you can see this cycle so if we think that we are here in terms of investment, if you're looking technical analysis, you can say that this can go up much higher. So that is one way how you can look at it. For me, these prices are high and I'm not going to buy anything at this price uh, because the potential for return, in my opinion, is not that great. Usually, I, if I was buying, I would be buying in those levels over there. So keep that in mind. Because if you are interested in buying, there's still a potential for that to keep going up. But the best times for buying, if you want to make a significant profit, are here. So those are the most interesting times. It's very difficult to buy when the market is in that kind of a trend. So this over here uh, could be something like uh, COVID, for example, when everything goes uh, really low and everything is panicking. Um, Recently, what's happening recently? Recently, we have all this scare about nuclear explosion in Ukraine. So if that happens, then we can expect uh, markets to drop like that. And for me, that would be the buying point. Uh, I know this sounds horrible, but I, I have a master's in finance. So I spoke and I know loads of investment bankers. So this kind of conversation is normal when you're having that when world world three uh, accident happens that is when you enter the market and you buy and that is why bitcoin needs professional traders because those are the guys who would stop from the market from crashing going all the way down because they're going to keep buying here and that money will eventually raise the, the the price up so for me these trends are very clear uh it's going up it's going down now it's going up it will keep going up but that's not the stage that i'm buying if if we're looking how the trends are developing up and down this is when i buy then it goes up and down this is when i would buy then it goes up and down this is when i would buy but it's very difficult the fear kind of kicks in at that stage you don't know uncertainty is big and you don't don't know if this is going to lead into something like a 1927 depression in which case you're not going to be able to recover your money for 20, 30 years. By that time, you're going to be retired or dead. In any case, I'm waiting for a significant uh, shift. And that is the moment that I will be buying. If you want to buy, possibly, there is still some um, room over there for you to make some profit. Uh, again, none of this is financial advice. This is for entertainment channel. Uh, I do have background in finance, but I'm not a financial advisor. You need to be certified. I'm not. You need to speak with somebody if you're going to invest significant amount of money. And this is another interesting diagram here. Uh, this is on S&P, the historical odds. And it's interesting how here's the reference to where I found this uh, diagram. But it's interesting how these pie charts are created. So for example, you're saying 
uh, bear market entry provides better entry points only 20% of the time. So, which means uh, the graph that I was saying that you buy when it's low here, uh, and then you keep going up, um, you never buy over here, you always buy at this stage. Uh, what this chart is saying is that only 20% of the people who buy over here actually are better off. Most of the people who buy in the in the bull market, the no lower price uh, after the bear, uh, those are the people who make uh, some kind of a return. Well, I, I don't know what to think about this because of the just of the dates. So that date over there, it's a little bit odd to take. So to take 1928, and uh, maybe that doesn't mean anything to people who don't come from a financial background, but my 1927 was the largest crash in the world, in the US as well. So that is just a few months after the beginning of the Great Depression. That's how it's called. Uh, and what the Great Depression means that the market was just going up, up, up. Actually, it was going more in this kind of a, a trend and then it crashed. And uh, during this crash, it never recovered. It just spent like 20 years going in this kind of spiral before it, it picked up again. So for any kind of statistics to use that as the, as the starting point, it's just we usually we put that in isolation because depressions only happen once once every 100 years so we put that in isolation and we analyze the data differently so um, when you look at these figures be careful sometimes the analysts who are using it they don't really know what are they analyzing and uh, this is another interesting and this is a very strong narrative for bitcoin is the Bitcoin Act, and I don't know how much of this will actually come true, but um, this um, gossip about establishing a strategic reserve of Bitcoin, and that strategic reserve would be around 200,000 BTC per year for minimum, uh, they, they're going to be holding it for a minimum of 20 years, and they're going to accumulate 1 million BTC if this gets approved. Um, this is obviously going to mean very good things about Bitcoin, um, and this is going to pump Bitcoin as well, but it's also shifting the narrative. So yesterday I was talking in the video about three different uh, stages in the market and when you buy old coins and usually Bitcoin dominance starts kicking in, which is happening now, then followed by Bitcoin price going up, which is happening now. And then eventually Bitcoin dominance uh, is decreasing, but the price of Bitcoin still goes up. That's when old coins would kick in and you're going to get significant return on old coins. Most of us, we hold old coins. Uh, Bitcoin is held by institutions now. I, I don't know people who hold, who hold Bitcoin. It's just, it was very cheap at some point and uh, rich people bought us out. And if that doesn't make sense to you, think about rich neighborhoods. Uh, you have a very poor neighborhood and one rich guy would go and buy all the houses. Uh, and then if there's a poor guy over there, uh, he's just going to buy his house because uh, they don't want him around. Um, so, and that's what happened when rich people decided to buy Bitcoin, basically they bought it and not many people uh, had the luxury to keep it. Uh, so many people, when they saw price of like Bitcoin reaching 100 USD, most of the people sold, most of the people that I know sold because we bought it for like a few pennies and went up to a hundred. Wow, significant profit. Uh, so it's, it's the same. Like uh, if you live in Oxford, where I live, uh, rich people bought all the houses. So one house now, it, it can cost you a few million, uh, but a few uh, miles out of Oxford, when there's a different neighborhood, you can buy a house for like uh, half a million. So they're basically, uh, accumulating wealth and that's what the us is doing here so they basically they're going to be accumulating 200,000 btc per year for until they accumulate 1 million btc they're going to hold that for 20 years and then they're going to sell it and make some significant profit if this goes through uh so who knows who knows let's see how that's going to develop uh this is an interesting post on twitter and Another very positive thing about crypto is that Trump is considering a uh, pro crypto lawyer uh, to be uh, on the security coin desk. So that's um, that's from recent news. 
so basically we're getting a whole new administration and the previous one was not that uh, for crypto, not that pro crypto. Now we're getting an administration that is really pro crypto. And um, these guys, they, they're going to make uh, everything run. Uh, what else do we have? Aha. Well, this is another interesting chart and it's not going to make much sense. So I'm going to try to explain it to the best that I can in few sentences because YouTube, nobody really wants to listen to wrong, uh, very long rambling. People just like very short diagram, description, move on. Uh, so if uh, I need subscribers, so I, I can't really be rambling and giving you a lecture for three hours here on this diagram. But what does it mean, these two diagrams? Well, it's, it's um, imagine that this blue over here being representative of the usage of Bitcoin. And this line over here, the price of Bitcoin. Now, think about this just for one second. Who is using Bitcoin? You cannot go and buy coffee with Bitcoin. It's going to cost you a lot of money in gas fees. Uh, they still, even today, we don't really have real use cases. You can make it happen, but it has not happened. Uh, there's no wide adoption of Bitcoin in terms of buying everyday things, buying your shoes, buying your trainers, buying your coffee, buying your, I don't know, paying for your uh, bus fare. That's not happening. So who are the users here in the red? Well, those users are the traders. So you have the people who are creating volatilities, people who really like volatilities because that's how they make money. They might make money from trading, from options, from arbitrage, from, from, from arbitrage, from you know buying it on the cheap, selling it on the high. It's a market. Uh, so the market makers are here and you can see this trend is starting to go up and it's, it's, it might take a little bit for that to kick in, but that is basically the BTC perpetual futures analyzed. That's what this chart means. It means that this uh, use case, the use case is slowly coming back. Uh, and if there's a use case, uh, eventually it, it, will, um, it will be valuable as a money asset. Because at this present moment, people say Bitcoin is going to place the door, Bitcoin is going to place the money. It's not even doing that. You're not using Bitcoin for everyday buying things. You're not. Nobody is. There's no, there's no real use case. Uh, there's, no, there's very few ATMs that you can withdraw BTC. It's not accepted in most shops. So this here is just the perpetuals, the futures. Uh, that's... That's the use case at this present moment. And that leads me to this. This is interesting. Now, uh, micro strategy, you're going to hear a lot about the micro strategy on the markets. Uh, so I wanted to talk about that for a few seconds because I don't want people to get burned and wrecked uh, because people like stocks. People like buying bonds. People like buying safe things. And even if there's volatility, many people still don't know how to buy Bitcoin. And they think if they buy Bitcoin, uh, they're going to lose the money and they're going to lose that uh, little USB drive and then the money will be gone. That is true. But is it worth investing in micro strategy? I'm not going to say yes or no. I'm just going to tell you what it is it well, because there's so much hype on the market about micro strategy. Every YouTube channel is talking about micro strategy. Nobody is saying what is it. Uh, so what is micro strategy? And let me explain that with a, a little bit of a text over here. Uh, micro strategy is basically buying things that we cannot buy. So this section over here, you and me, the retail, the normal people, we don't qualify for that. We cannot buy it. Uh, so basically, it's converting 0% on that for 50% premium. Uh, and you have this cap at 672 per bond price, for example. 55% premium is a really big premium. But what they're selling you is not the Bitcoin, they're selling you the volatility. So you're buying the volatility, how the market price goes up and down. That is what you buy. You're not buying the Bitcoin. Uh, and then if that volatility goes up to a certain level, obviously they make profit. And uh, this is where it's going to start making sense to people who were in finance around 2008. 
uh, if you remember what happened in 2008 when uh, we bundled, we, I said, I was part of the system, we bundled uh, risky assets into categories and then we put them into packages and we call those packages something uh, safer. We call them all oh, this because it's a package, these many investors, not all of them will go bankrupt straight away. And uh, we put them in, instead of high risk, we bundle them into medium risk. And then we bundle them into more packages of middle uh, risk. And then we saw them as very low risk. So high risk assets, uh, higher the risk, the higher the return. But high risk assets, they become very low risk. It, it's called dark finance. That's what we did 2008. That's what triggered the big financial crash of 2008. We took uh, risky investors, we bundled them, and because there were so many, we said, oh, it's no longer risky because there's so many of them, not all of them, they're going to go bankrupt. And we ended up selling those uh, same buckets that we created, the, the boxes, we sold them to investors for loads of money as a safe investment with a very low return. Uh, so microfinance here is saying, okay, we'll give you 55% premium. But there's a catch over there because this is only when Bitcoin go price goes up. If the Bitcoin price starts going down, <laughs> things are not looking very good. <laughs> and uh, that's the whole summary in a sentence. Um, because you're going to feel the squeeze from the volatility and you're going to feel the squeeze from the price of BTC going down. Um, and how much is that premium that you can buy on this uh, uh market cap of 100 billion that they have well they hold 331 BTC uh which is worth 32 billion uh, and they give you w one to three times leverage of the volatility so uh leverage in, in some trading platforms you can have 100x so this you know it's not that bad i know it's risky it's all it's not that bad that's not the problem here fundamentally that's not the problem um because volatility is something that you're taking on as an investor but you're not buying bitcoin that's what bottom line here it has to be clear you're buying the volatility of bitcoin without holding the bitcoin if you want to buy Bitcoin, you have to buy it in uh, many different ways. And now you even have exchange traded funds in the US. But in the UK, for example, those uh, ETH are not still legal. So you cannot put uh, ETH Bitcoin in your eyes. That's the tax free uh, account. And if you don't hold uh, your Bitcoin or your investment into ISA, then taxmen will come after you and they can be brutal. The fees that they're going to charge you on your profit on your investment are just horrible uh especially because of the volatility it's it's this is like a casino things go up and things goes things go down when things go down uh tax pen doesn't really calculate the the loss in this scenario so what is uh micro strategy micro strategy is that you buy the volatility of the bitcoin without buying the bitcoin and it's now it starts to sound like those packages that I was talking about 2008. Um, MicroStrategy is basically acting like an investment bank over here. And investment banks are very good businesses. They make loads of profit, are very highly profitable businesses for themselves, not for you. Uh, and for the buyers, the investors that they might be in this category. But we cannot be in that category. So hopefully this... It's a very, it can get very long the explanation. So the, the simple thing is you're buying the risk, you're not buying the Bitcoin. Um, and if you're a trader, that might be beneficial to you because you want to trade on that volatility. Maybe there's some interesting things for you, but you really need to know what you're doing. Uh, it's it's This is not for everyday investors. So when you see things like 55% premium, 300% premium, don't get fooled. Uh, you, you're not, there's always a small print over there. So, and investment bankers are not here to make money for you. They're there to make money for themselves. So that is 
basically the summary of the analysis, but let's talk a little bit about, because it's not all about BTC. Am I buying? If I had money, if I was a, um, if I was a really rich man, or if I was still working in finance, would I buy? Uh, let's look at this chart, and this is going to make sense to you. This is a very, very simple chart, uh, one of the most basic analysis. So you have a line over here, and you have a line over there, and in the middle is the line where it's like an average. So you're expecting this is the high, the highest it would go, and this is the lowest that it would go. Anything out of those two, you sell. You simply sell. You have stop losses, you have you have positions open, and anything that goes out of this, the risk is too difficult to calculate. You sell. So we are in this category. This is the how Bitcoin is performing. As you can see, this line is Bitcoin and is within this range. I cannot show with this too, but it's it's within this range. Let's call it a range. Anything in this range is okay. If it goes down, immediately you sell. If it goes up, you sell, you make a profit. And then when it goes down, you buy again. Would I buy Bitcoin now? Well, look at where it is. This is where Bitcoin is at this present moment. So it has broken this level. I wouldn't buy. I would buy at this stage here. So I would wait for correction for Bitcoin to drop down and I would buy over here. But and this this is something you really have to pay attention on. If it keeps going out, obviously you hold it. If it breaks this line, you make a profit, you sell. You don't hold it because eventually it's going to come down. But if instead it goes down here, you made a loss. You have to have a stop loss over here. You cannot take the risk and that that can go down really low. So you have a stop loss over here and you sell over there. This is a very simple strategy of stocks trading. And obviously I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you to go and do trading. But if you're thinking about doing, this would be, oh, hold on. Something is happening. Aha, uh -huh. Funker is going live. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Funker. Uh, so I'm going to go and watch it. Uh, and I'm going to upload this video, record another one later on. I have to watch Funker. But Funker is great. If you're not following, you should follow him. Uh, see you in the next one.